Hello, and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. As you might already know, uh, since her obituary appeared in the New York Times and in Newsweek and on CNN and NPR and just about everywhere else you can think of, uh, Petra Mayer, who was a very dear friend of mine, died suddenly uh, last last Saturday early morning. And during that time, during the time since her death, and now many of her friends have been gathering to talk and to remember her, and to sort of try and get a any sort of a grip on on what happened and I know this is kind of a heavy episode and I'm sorry about that and I'm not here to eulogize Petra that's not what this is about more uh, I want to talk to you about a, a practice that I have been doing for years and that practice is uh, what something I call telling you now it's something I started doing after another dear friend of mine uh, died a number of years ago, Paula Montre. And uh, I, I started doing it because I wanted to not wait until after people I love have passed away to let them know how I feel. So I started doing this public uh, telling of how I feel about the person that I love, uh, usually on Facebook, if we're if we're friends on Facebook, but something very public, something where I get to write out exactly what this person means to me, and tell them. And I I prefaced all of this by saying, look, I'm going to be talking about all of you at one point or another because I'm going sort of through my friends list, and I'm working on uh, getting to everybody eventually. To, to tell them how I feel about them. So I'm not waiting until after someone has passed away to think, oh, crud, darn, I can't believe I didn't tell this person how I feel about them. And it's a simple, uh, not easy, but simple thing to do. It's literally sit down and come up with the things that you admire about the people in your life. It could be family members, it could be friends, it could be your romantic partner. It doesn't matter who it is. Just I encourage you to begin. It's such a, an enriching process to go through and to sort of think about what do I feel about this person? And with Petra, uh, she is, was, and ever shall be a genius, brilliant writer, brilliant editor. She edited my most recent book, uh, nonfiction book, Speak From Within, and she did such an incredible job. And uh, luckily, I got to say that to her. And Petra was also in the Carolyn group that I lead and manage, The Philosopher's Tones. She's one of the altos. And I got to tell her la just last week, I was at her house and got to tell her how incredible she sounded. I got to tell everybody how incredible they sounded. We had never sounded as good. She she uh, was kind enough to let us ho uh, host rehearsals for the year because this is such a seasonal thing. She let us uh, host at her house the rehearsals. And I also got to stay at her house and visit with her during, you know, sort of between rehearsals. And so during that time, I just, uh, there's nothing prescient about it. I, I didn't, she was in perfect seeming in perfect health but I got to talk to her and I got to we got to go really deep and I and I told her my telling you now in person and uh, I got to tell her how much I respect and admire her her work ethic her generalistic integrity her uh, incredible sense of creativity and art and music and most of all books and also just how incredible she was uh, and, and you know in my in my spiritual tradition continues to be how friendly she is how amazing she is as a being on this on this planet or was a being on this planet she's moved on to greener pastures and again, I'm not here to eulogize her. It's really more just thinking about the practice of telling the people in your life that you care about them and, more importantly, what it is that you admire. Don't just go, I love you, because that's, that's, it's lovely. Don't get me wrong. Saying I love you is lovely. But, you know, sometimes you say it and you hear it so much that it kind of – kind of the meaning kind of – gets diluted, if you see what I mean. 
So instead, figure out exactly what you love and admire about a person in your life and then write it for them in a in a poem or in just, you know, sort of write it down and give them a note or do what I did and totally embarrass everybody you know by putting it up on Facebook. And I got to tell you, one of the things that happens is the person almost always has no idea you admire them the way that you admire them. They have no clue. And generally speaking, I, you know, it blows them away to, to read the things that you think are incredible because, frankly, to them, those very things are, eh, they're not that big a deal. And you're reeling with how incredible you think they are, how amazing you think you are, they are, how wonderful and friendly and gregarious and creative and organized and kind and sweet and dear to you they are. Whatever those adjectives are, let them know. So again, find a person in your life that you that you love and admire and list down for yourself exactly what it is you love and admire about them. Is it their kindness? Is it how generous they are? Is it how talented and skilled they are? Is it what a good cook they are? Whatever it is, think up everything that you can, write it down, and then give it to them. And in fact, if you want to uh, do this, I, I think this is a great way to uh, give people a holiday gift. Print it out in, in a pretty font and give them that as a gift. I, we've gotten to the point with the holiday season approaching, I feel like I can talk about this. We've gotten to the point where everything is, is feels like a sort of financial transaction. What is the monetary gift that you're going to give? Well, instead, what if you were to just write down a heartfelt letter of everything that you admire about the people in your life and give them the letters and see if maybe they want to do the same thing, that that, that will enrich your lives beyond uh, a physical, tangible gift. It's, it's something to think about. And in, in fact, now that I've thought of it, recording this episode, I might just do that myself. So yeah, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. You can go to like canva.com and uh, select a new file and, and it you know, if you do like a a presentation or uh, some other one page uh, item on Canva, it comes up with all these templates that you can use. And uh, then you can choose the template, choose the colors, choose the fonts and write out what the people in your life mean to you. And then print them out and, and give that to the person or put it in and make it a JPEG file and download it and send it to the the person on Facebook or on Instagram or DM it or whatever it is you need to do, but let them know. And as I said, the practice, I, I call it telling you now, it's a really, it feels great to do. It, I think it feels pretty good to the person that you are saying it to, but it also feels amazing to you to, to see how that impacts the person and look at what an impact it has to hear how much someone else admires them. And usually it's something about themselves that they take for granted that they don't realize is wonderful, or they certainly don't realize that someone else thinks it's wonderful. So you're going to be amazed and surprised when you show that kind of admiration and expression with the people in your life, you're going to be amazed at the responses you get. And I recognize that today is Compassion Wednesday, uh, and we're talking about how compassion plays a role in innovation and how we can use it to change the world. Well, I think that this kind of outreach, this kind of outpouring of authentic affection and admiration elevates all of us. Even if you do it just for one person, I'm willing to bet you you're going to feel amazing, and so are they. So try it. I encourage you to try it. I am grateful, so grateful that I got a chance to talk to my amazing friend Petra Mayer before she died. And it was, a, it was a shock and a tragic loss for so many the world over. Uh, and I'm one of the lucky few who got to see her and the last day before she died. So, and suddenly uh, no one knew, no one had any idea that this was even a potentiality. So... Anyway, before 
that happens to you before someone you love passes away suddenly, tell them how you feel about them. And for all of us, this is a really just a reminder and it's an out of left field reminder. Make a will. Make a will. Uh, you can download forms uh, or buy them or something. Uh, make a will. Make a living will. Make sure that, that the people in your life have your passwords because that's a form of compassion too. If anything, you know, heaven forbid, if anything happens to any of us, it is really good for our people, for our families, our friends who are left behind to know how to handle things. And it makes things so much easier if you have a will. And I am not a lawyer. I, I cannot give you any kind of guidance on exactly what to do, but there are forms that you can purchase off the internet or contact a lawyer or go to your local uh, government office, probate court, I guess, and find out exactly how you would need to make a will in your state. And I know generally you have to notarize things and do all sorts of stuff. And my husband and I are about to update all of that because it's an important, it's an important and responsible and compassionate thing to do. This is going to sound really macabre, but after you die, you don't care whether or not you had a will, right? There's no, there's nothing that tells us that there's consciousness behind there. And I don't want to get into religion or anything. It's just looking at the sort of the tangible pieces of paper. But the people who are left behind are reeling and in shock and grief stricken. And the very last thing in the world that they want to have to do is search through your belongings for your will. So make sure that you have a will, make sure that you know uh, where it is, make sure that the person in your life that's closest to you knows where it is, make sure they know your passwords, or how to find your passwords, I should say, uh, if because you're they're going to need that. And, uh, and you will need theirs. So the, the same thing holds true for your parents and your partners and close friends, if you trust them with that. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but boy, it's really helpful if you need that information to have it readily accessible. I'm sorry this episode was such a downer. I was trying to talk about the telling you why practice or telling you now practice, I should say, but it turned into something else as well. And that is the compassion we show for our loved ones by making sure that they have as little to do as possible should the worst happen and we pass away. Anyway, uh, I will have tomorrow's episode, of course, will be... Um, Sorry, this is hard. Uh, tomorrow's episode will be another chapter of Speak From Within, which Petra, as I said, edited, and she did a phenomenal job. I'm reading it to you every Thursday, so if you want to engage an audience, if you want to live, if you want to engage people, if you want to inspire them and motivate them, and, or, and especially if you are afraid to stand up and speak in public, this book is incredibly helpful. I used to have a public speaking phobia, but I don't anymore. Anyway, uh, I, I detailed how I got over it in the book. So if you are interested in becoming a better public speaker and getting rid of some of those fears, this book will help you. And this episode was brought to you by Brain FM. I, you know I love it. I talk about it all the time, how much I love that little app because it helps me create. It helps me put out five episode podcast episodes a week and all the attendant graphics and all of that other stuff. It helps me read. It helps me sleep. It helps me meditate. Just about everything. <laughs> I'm, I keep having to recharge my little earbuds because I'm using the app so much. So uh, if you want to try it, go to brainfm. Uh, no, sorry, go to brain.fm slash innovative mindset and get ye 20% off. If you do go through that, of course, you'll get a little my little gift from you from huh, I, my brain is fried. <laughs> my little gift to you is 20% off if you go through that brain.fm slash innovative mindset link. Uh, I'm going to put it in the show notes so that you can have it. The reason that's important is because you get 20% off, but as I am an affiliate, because I love Brain FM so much, I may get a little bit of a payout if you do that. Until next time, I am reminding you to be creative, be bold, and most of all, be kind. <laughs>